October 5, 2025. On Mars, Perseverance captures a razor-thin streak racing at 60 kilometers per second. Evidence of interstellar Comet 3, I slash Atlas flying past, just as the world waited for history. Within hours, thousands of amateur astronomers race to verify the images, sparking a fierce debate. Some see a perfect match, others call it noise, and buried in the data, a mysterious green pixel flashes for a split second, defying every expectation for a comet. Official agencies stay silent as tensions reach fever pitch. If these findings are real, what has Perseverance actually photographed? And could this shatter what we know about visitors from beyond our solar system? Stefan Burns, a software engineer by day and a dedicated amateur astronomer by night, became one of the first to download the Perseverance time-lapse frames. He set out to replicate the streak using a methodical workflow honed on countless asteroid and comet images. Burns started by calibrating the plate scale, matching each pixel from Perseverance's navigation camera to known star positions using a reference catalog. This step let him anchor the raw Martian sky to precise celestial coordinates, a foundation for any credible claim. Next, he aligned every frame in the nine-minute sequence, compensating for the subtle drift of the rover and the predicted path of 3i slash Atlas. To separate signal from noise, he used median stacking and sigma clipping algorithms designed to suppress cosmic ray hits and hot pixels, both common on Mars, where cosmic radiation bombards the camera every night. Synthetic injection tests followed. Burns added simulated streaks, matching the expected speed and brightness of 3i slash Atlas into the raw data. These tests helped him measure how often a real signal could hide behind noise or how easily a faint artifact might fool the eye. Each result was posted with full code, calibration files, and error bars. Burns' public stack showed a faint but consistent streak, matching the predicted velocity of 60 kilometers per second. His work became a reference for other teams, setting a technical baseline for what counted as a real detection. As more analysts joined in, the challenge shifted from asking if the streak existed to how reliably it could be measured, and whether anything stranger might be hiding in the data. Thousands of downloads poured in within hours, flooding astronomy forums with raw perseverance frames and code snippets. Some users, like Team Parallax, quickly posted their own stacks, claiming to confirm the 60 km per second streak. Others, including Spectra Junkies, challenged the result, arguing that the faint line matched patterns left by cosmic rays or compression artifacts, not a real interstellar visitor. Arguments broke out over stacking pipelines, median versus sigma clipping, and whether synthetic injection tests could really mimic the Martian camera's quirks. Deep Sky DAO, a decentralized group, published their scripts for public scrutiny, inviting anyone to rerun the analysis. In the chaos, one small team flagged something stranger. A single green pixel that flashed for just one frame at 00 003 UTC in their animation. The anomaly was gone in every other stack, dismissed by some as a hot pixel, or a fluke of color interpolation. But speculation spread fast. Was it a sensor glitch, or a sign of unusual chemistry in the comet's coma? The forums fractured into factions. Those demanding more evidence, those convinced it was proof of something extraordinary, and those weary of another internet mirage. As debates raged, pressure mounted for official data from Mars orbiters and for NASA or ESA to weigh in. The search for consensus had shifted from code to conversation, with every new frame or flagged pixel fueling the controversy. Pressure from the global astronomy community pushed official teams into action. On October 3, 2025, engineers at NASA and the European Space Agency began daily coordination to retarget Mars orbiters toward 3i-Atlas. High-rise on Mars. 
Reconnaissance Orbiter, CASIS on ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter, and HRSC on Mars Express, each received updated pointing commands, relying on the latest ephemeris from JPL Horizons. Every adjustment depended on spice kernels for sub-second timing and precise instrument orientation, ensuring that exposures would catch the comet's predicted path across the Martian sky. Teams worked through narrow observation windows, juggling spacecraft schedules and communication bandwidth. Each instrument brought unique strengths, high-rises fine spatial detail, KSSS's multispectral coverage, HRSC's wide-field stereo imaging. But the challenge was universal. 3i slash Atlas was faint, moving fast, and millions of kilometers away. Any slip in timing or pointing risked missing the target entirely. Despite public demand, no uncalibrated quick-look images were released. Internal review and pipeline checks took priority, holding back raw frames until after the solar conjunction. For now, only the logs and exposure plans hinted at what the orbiters might have seen. October 8, 2025, marked the start of solar conjunction. Ten days when Mars slipped behind the Sun from Earth's point of view. Every mission team knew the drill. With the sun's glare swamping radio frequencies, deep space network bandwidth tightened to a trickle. Command uplinks were restricted to critical sequences only. Downlinks, carrying precious science data, slowed to a crawl or stopped altogether. For Perseverance and the Mars orbiters, this blackout meant enforced radio silence. High-rise, Cassis, HRSC, all still tracking 3i slash Atlas, could only store their images on board, waiting for the skies to clear. Engineers watched the clock, knowing that any anomaly during these days would go unreported. Every byte of raw data queued up for weeks. The embargo extended beyond just the conjunction. With deep space network traffic prioritized for spacecraft health and emergencies, even routine science transmissions faced a five-week backlog. On Earth, astronomers refreshed data portals in vain. The forums that had buzzed with new stacks fell quiet, speculation filling the void left by silence. For the global community, the wait for answers had just begun. Dr. Leila Navarro, lead spectroscopist for the Mars Express mission, poured over the first spectra returned from the orbiter's October 2025 passes. She expected the familiar fingerprints of comet chemistry, strong water vapor lines, a mix of cyanogen and carbon chains glowing in the coma. Instead, the data told a different story. The classic C2 swan bands, a staple in nearly every comet observed from Earth, were missing. In their place, carbon dioxide lines towered above the noise, overwhelming the spectrum. Navarro mapped the carbon dioxide to water ratio and found water vapor trailing far behind, a reversal of normal cometary outgassing. The surprise deepened as she examined the metal lines. Nickel, not iron, dominated the emission features. Such a pattern defies the established taxonomy of comets, both local and interstellar. Navarro double-checked calibration files and cross-referenced with independent stacks. The absence of C2, the carbon dioxide dominance, and the nickel-heavy signature held up. Each anomaly resisted easy explanation, challenging both instrument and theory. The findings demanded confirmation across more wavelengths and raised the question, was 3i slash Atlas a comet at all, or something entirely new. Statisticians at SETI and planetary science centers launched a battery of orbital simulations, tracing 3i slash Atlas backward across decades of sky maps. The most advanced runs, using Monte Carlo methods to account for every uncertainty in the comet's measured path, delivered a surprise a 0.6% overlap with the coordinates of the 1977 WOW signal. The result was neither a match nor a dismissal, but enough to stir debate. Some argued that even a fraction of a percent was striking, 
given the vastness of the sky and the rarity of interstellar visitors. Others countered that such overlaps are inevitable with enough trials and uncertain orbits. Meanwhile, radio telescopes scanned the predicted path, searching for any narrowband signal like the one that set off the WOW event. No confirmed detections have surfaced so far, leaving the question suspended between statistical curiosity and cosmic coincidence. Validation now depends on a four-part framework that guides every claim. First, repeatability. Independent teams must recover the same streak or anomaly in their own stacks, using different methods and raw data. Second, multiband confirmation. The phenomenon needs to appear across multiple filters or wavelengths, ruling out quirks of a single sensor channel. Third, geometric consistency. Any companion object or feature must trace a path that matches celestial mechanics, not just random noise. Last, the most demanding test. Active maneuvers or signal patterns that can't be explained by natural motion or artifacts. Each rung sets a higher bar, and only by passing all four can a detection move from speculation to scientific fact. With the next major data release scheduled for December 2025, the community prepares to judge new evidence by these standards, determined to separate discovery from illusion. On October 5, 2025, Perseverance recorded a nine-minute time-lapse on Mars, capturing a single, razor-thin streak moving at 60 kilometers per second, an image downloaded and analyzed by thousands worldwide. While some amateur teams confirmed the streak, debate erupted over a fleeting green pixel anomaly. Institutional observatories responded, with Mars orbiters retargeting and generating spectra that upended expectations. Carbon dioxide emissions dominated, typical cometary carbon bands were absent, and nickel lines exceeded iron, breaking known comet categories. No quick-look images from orbiters have been released, and a five-week solar conjunction blackout has delayed further data. Monte Carlo simulations found only a 0.6% overlap with the historic 1977 WOW signal, and no narrow-band radio detections have been reported. As of now, the true nature of 3i slash Atlas remains unclassified and unresolved. NASA and the European Space Agency are set to release new data by December 2025. Until then, the evidence stands as it is, remarkable, incomplete, and awaiting the next chapter of discovery.